turn me around, ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. I'm gonna keep on walking, keep on talking, marching up to freedom's land. Good afternoon. My name is Fannie Lou Hamer, and I come this afternoon and hoping that you're here to register to vote or to get out there and vote. And I'm here today to tell you a little bit about myself and what I had to go through all because I just wanted to register to vote. I live at 626 Lafayette Street in Ruleville, Mississippi, the Sunflower County. And I'm thanking you for coming out and listening to what I've got to say today. My folks were sharecroppers. That's right, sharecroppers. And we lived on a plantation owned by J.D. Marlowe in 1960. We picked cotton. We picked cotton every day, all day, in the hot sun. My mom and daddy had 20 children. I was number three. So there wasn't no need for no machinery because they had enough children. We all worked on J.D. Marlowe's plantation. Every one of us. My daddy worked hard and my mama worked hard. My daddy and my mama did the best they could with what they had. Oh, we lived on that plantation, lived in a house, didn't even have running water, no inside plumbing at all, no heat, didn't have no windows. But my parents did the best they could. We did the best we could. My daddy one time made enough money he told Mr. Marlowe if he could just have a little bit of property to have something of his own. And Mr. Marlowe, he agreed to it. And my daddy bought two mules. We got us another house. Wasn't that much better, but it was just a little bit better than what we had. And we had enough land that we were going to plant some crops. Well, I want you to know that all that hard work my daddy had done, Somebody went and poisoned the mules and they destroyed all the crops. And we told Mr. Marlowe what had happened. You know, he act like he didn't know, but we know it was the overseer who had done that. He'd ruined everything we had only because he didn't want us to have anything. But my parents were hard workers. My daddy never did good either. We picked 50 to 60 pounds of cotton a day. I was six years old when I started picking cotton. Mm -hmm, six years old. I started picking cotton. And when I was 16, I was the bookkeeper. I had a little education. See, we did go to school and learn to read and write. But when it was time to pick that cotton, we wasn't allowed to go to school because we had to work. And so I was the bookkeeper. And one day, old J.D. Marlowe moaning and groaning about he wasn't getting enough money. We wasn't doing the job right. But I found out that J.D. Marlowe was cheating on the scales. We picked 50 to 60 pounds of cotton every day, and he was cheating the scales. Well, since I was the bookkeeper, I started the scales myself. Now, don't you go tell nobody. But he did it, I did it. Because I knew I had to do something for my people. They was working hard, and he was cheating them. And it ain't right. One time I said to my mama, I wish I was white. She said, Fanny Lou, don't you ever say that again. You be proud you a little black girl. And you respect yourself, she said. 
And one day, somebody's going to respect you for who you are. But now, I only said that because all the white people had everything. Had all the best houses, the finer clothes, the best automobiles, and all the best food. And it ain't right. We working hard out there in that hot sun every day, all day. Starting at five in the morning. But yet we didn't have these things. And he was still talking about we wouldn't make enough money for him. One time it rained. It rained so hard that we wouldn't able to get out there and pick that cotton. So he had me to go in his house to work. That's why right, I had to go inside the house and work, cook and clean and iron, do all sorts of things for him. Do you know that while they sat there and ate the food that I cooked and I had to stand there and just watch him eat that food and say, yes, sir, no, sir, as they stood there and called me all kinds of names. But I had to do what they asked me to do. And one time, I got angry and I said, if I'm going to cook the food, I'm going to eat first. So I did. I ate first. I sure did. And I put that same plate and I left it on the table. Now don't you go tell him about it because I told you I was mad. I was cleaning up the house. And I got in one of the bathrooms that was in the home. And his daughter said to me, now Fanny Lou, you don't have to clean that bathroom. That's Buster's bathroom. Buster was a dog. We didn't even have inside plumbing, but yet they had a bathroom for a dog. And when I asked Mr. about an indoor plumbing for us, you know what he said? We didn't need it. That was unnecessary. This made me mad. Oh, I was angry. I was so mad about that. Having to cook and clean and iron and wash their clothes. And then, you know, as time went on, Mississippi had this group of people that came around. And these people were stirring up on rockers in Mississippi. And one day I was out picking cotton along with my mom. My mom was saying, oh Lord, you know just how I feel. She'd be out there picking that cotton and singing. And one of the ladies said, Fanny Lou, they say that meeting at the church said something about going down there to the courthouse and, and, and we, had, we, we could register to vote. I didn't even know we could vote. She said, you ought to go to that meeting. Well, I want you to know, I'm going to go to that meeting. I'm going to go to that meeting, and I'm going to go down there and see what that meeting is all about. Oh, yeah, it was going to be some trouble. They said it was going to be trouble. They talked that we had the right to go down there and register to vote. But when he asked me want to go, I volunteered myself. I volunteered myself. I woke up this morning with a sign on Jesus. Stand on freedom. Oh, woke up this morning with my mind. Stand on freedom. Woke up this morning with my mind. Stand on freedom. Yes, we will set my mind on freedom. We're going to go down there to that courthouse. Well, that next day, got on the bus, bus load of us, the old school bus. We got on the school bus going downtown. And um, a lot of us sitting on the bus, and some of them had got kind of nervous because folks was passing us by screaming and yelling and saying all kinds of ugly things to us and calling us all kinds of names. But some of them wanted to say, let's turn this bus around. And I said, no, we're not turning this bus around. We're going to go on. So I did what I knew how to do best. 
Asteroid C. Asteroid C, and we started seeing this. We will go spin your down here. I'm gonna call these people down. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Yes, I'm gonna let it shine. Shine, let it shine. Let it shine, oh, I go, Lord, I'm going to let it shine, oh, everywhere I go, Lord, I'm going to let it shine, everywhere I go, Lord, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, oh. expect out on the bus and we started on home. It was a quiet ride all the way back to rural Mississippi. We all got on that bus and nobody said no word. And all of a sudden there were sirens going everywhere, lights flashing, police everywhere. And the bus driver had to pull the bus over. He pulled the bus over and one of those patrolmen got on the bus, and of course he called us all kinds of names, called the bus driver all kind of ugly things, and he said to the bus driver, I'm gonna have to give you a ticket. And the bus driver wanted to know, why was he getting tickets? Do you know that he got a ticket because the bus was the wrong color yellow? Now I ask you, what other color is a school bus supposed to be but yellow? Well, he gave them a hundred dollar ticket, and the rest of us, I said, now we're gonna have to get some money together. Everybody went to amongst the pocketbooks and in their pockets, and we had enough money to pay that ticket. So we had to go back into town, pay that ticket, and then we was headed home. Now, before I could get my foot back onto that plantation, somebody called. 
called Mr. Marlowe and told him that I had gone down there to that register office and registered to vote. And he stood there with my husband, who I had married and, and was raising two kids. He stood there with them and he said, Fanny Lou, we're not ready for that in Mississippi. You're going to have to go down there to that register's office and withdraw your registration. Well, I kindly looked at him, and in a nice way, I said, I didn't go down there for you. I went down there for myself. And at that point, you know what he told me? He said, I'm going to have to go. Because Mississippi was not ready for that. So I packed my clothes. I said goodbye to my husband and my two daughters there, and I went to stay with some friends. Now, all kinds of things were going on in Mississippi that wasn't right. They was burning our homes and, and destroying our property and, and, and just killing folks for no reason at all in Mississippi. It ain't right, I'm telling you, it's just not right. And it just made me angry to know that if they can vote in Mississippi, why can't I vote in Mississippi? Well, then it just made me angry. And things got just a little too hectic because the civil rights movement had started up. And several of those people that come into Mississippi spreading the word about the rights that my people had. And they have thought, you know what? We, we don't have to leave here. It, it's just getting too, too many things, too many killings, and, and too much stuff is going on. So in the middle of the night, in the middle of the night, because we weren't supposed to leave that plantation without anybody, without, not, not without permission. He left in the middle of the night. J.D. Marlowe didn't know he was gone. And we packed up to move to the next county. Now, I want you to know, that same night that I moved out of that room of the friend's house, it was shot up 16 times. Had I been in that room, I would be dead. Now I ask you, is this America? Because all I wanted to do was register to vote. They shot the room up 16 times. It ain't right. We moved to the next county. Things were just a little bit quiet. And I was sitting on the porch, I'll never forget it. A man came up to me and he said, are you Fanny Lou Hamer? And I said, yes, sir, I am. He said, are you the lady that went down to the register's office to register to vote? I said, yes, sir, I am. He said, um, we need you to help us out. We need you to be a voice to get other folks to get out to register to vote. I wanted to know if I would go with him and, and on this journey with the civil rights movement. And I told him, where do I start? Who do I talk to? What do I need to do? Because I had something to say. Voting is your voice. Voting is your voice. It gives us the right to choose who the president is and all other political figures. So I said, yes, I want to go. So we went from town to town, city to city, spreading the word, getting out there, voicing what we knew was right about. It's your right to vote. You should vote. And we registered people to vote. Now I hadn't passed that test yet, but I kept going down there to that register's office until I passed that test. And I finally passed that voter's registration test so that I could register to vote. And then they had some kind of voting going on in Mississippi. And then I decided I'm gonna go down and vote. Do you know I still couldn't vote? Cause they said I owed a poll tax bill. Now I know they was just throwing all kinds of things at us just because of who we were. I didn't even know 
that we had the right to vote up until the civil rights movement. But we all can vote. And that's just what I aim to do. So I went out and I spoke and they heard me. And we got people on the bandwagon and we started the Freedom Democrat Party. That's right. We started the Freedom Democrat Party and we went on and on and place to place letting people know our voices does matter. We needed to vote. We needed to be heard. But we took a trip going to South Carolina. I'll never forget it. Loaded up a trailways bus, a whole bunch of us. We, we went to South Carolina and went to a meeting, a registration convention, and everybody talked about our rights to vote all over. We loaded up on that bus coming home. We got to Wyoming, Mississippi, and we stopped at a restaurant. Some of us was tired, wanted to use the restroom and get something to eat. But I didn't, I just stayed on the bus because I was tired. I just sat there on the bus. And all of a sudden, there's this rockers of screaming and hollering and running all back to the bus and police everywhere, patrolmen and, and highwaymen and everything. The lights just zooming, zooming, zooming. And they just screaming, Betty Lou, get back on that bus, get back. I was ready to step off the bus and as soon as I stepped off the bus, I heard one of them say, get that one right there. Well, he snatched me off that bus, threw me down, kicked me in my stomach and threw me in the squad car. Everybody on that bus was arrested. We were beaten right there on that property where that restaurant was. They took us to jail. They took us to a booking room. They separated the men on one side and the women on the other. And they called us all kinds of names. They spit on us. They called us horrible names and they beat us down. They put me in a cell with three men. All I could hear was screaming and licks going on. Those three women in the cell with me, we just all started praying. We didn't know what was going on. And then one by one, they came and got us ladies. First lady, they came and got, they drug her out took her to another cell and all you could hear was licks after licks and screams after scream. And she screamed, Lord have mercy on their souls. She just kept screaming until she wasn't screaming no more. And then they came and got the next lady and they beat and they beat and they beat on her. And she screamed and they kept telling her, you say yes sir to me, you say no sir to me. And she said, I can't say that because I don't know you that well. And they beat her some more. She screamed until she didn't scream no more. And then it was time for me. They came and got me. They took me to a cell. And they told me to lie down on this car. And there were two men in that cell, and they told those two men, you are to beat her until I tell you to stop. Well, the first man started beating me. I screamed and I screamed and I screamed. And the more I screamed, the harder he beat. He just kept taking his fist and he was just beating and beating and beating. And I said, Lord, help me, Jesus. And he just kept beating and beating. And I tried to protect myself. My dress came up over my head. I tried to keep it down. And the more I did, they would pull it back up and they would beat. And that first man beat me so much till he was dying. And then they gave that second man that Billy stick. And he took that stick and he beat and he beat and he beat. And I screamed, Lord, help me. He said, what is your name? The officer asked me my name and I said, it's Fanny Lou. He said, you gonna wish you was dead. And while they were beating me with that stick, they sat on me and those patrolmen in there, they 
took their fist and they beat and they beat and they beat. I screamed until I was tired. I couldn't scream no more. I must have passed out. Because when I woke up, one eye was swollen shut. My hand was so huge. I had bruises all up and down my body. And my body ached so bad. And I stayed in that jail cell for a few days. I finally had my day in court. Do you know that they charged me for resisting arrest? I was charged for resisting arrest. All I wanted to do was register to vote. Now I ask you, is this America? Well, let me tell you something. They might have beat Fannie Lou, but they didn't beat Fannie Lou. I continued on with my movement. That did not stop me. They beat me trying to shut me up. But the movement got stronger, got bigger, and we did more things. Because we were determined to change things in Mississippi and everywhere else that was gonna allow us to register to vote. Mississippi needed a whole lot of change. If the white folks in Mississippi could have everything, do everything, own everything, we needed to have our voice to make some changes. So we took our voice all the way up to the national convention, the democratic convention. Oh yeah, we, we loaded up a busload of us. And it wasn't just black folk on that bus, it was all kinds of folk on that bus. They had a voice too. And we went all the way to speak at that convention. President Johnson happened to be the president at that time. And we were allowed to speak at the convention. Dr. King was there, along with other familiar faces and leaders. But the president decided that he wasn't going to have it. We weren't going to have no voice. We not going to speak. And um, it was my time to get up and speak. And I addressed the Democratic Party. Oh yeah, I did. And um, while I was there, I noticed the room was filled with thousands and thousands of people. And they had us way, way, way up in the back. But then they gave us our time to speak. There was TV, and there was radio, and there was newspaper people all around. And right in the middle of my speech, I said, I am Fannie Lou Hamer. I live at 626 Lafayette Street in Louisville, Mississippi. I started my speech and President Johnson interrupted the television stations. He had something to say, but that didn't stop Fannie Lou. I let them know who I was. I told them all what happened to us on the panel we wanted to register to vote. I told my story of what happened to me and the others while we were in jail. I said what I had to say. And I said, is this America where we have to sleep without telephones off the hook? Cause our lives are being threatened now, is this America where well, we have to watch everything we do on account of we want to register to vote? The room went dead silent. Everybody was listening. They all heard my story about us while we were in jail. Nobody should be treated that way. I got beat by five different men in a cell, and it ain't right. Now I asked you, is this America? We all said what we had to say at that convention. We went on back to the hotel 
And somebody turned on the TV and said, Thing Little Foot, you on TV. I want you to know every TV and radio station and newspaper person that was there, when the president thought they weren't listening, they were listening, that it had broadcast all over my story about what happened to us in jail. And it went everywhere. We didn't accomplish a lot at that convention. They wanted to compromise, and that's all there was. And we went on back to our home. We kept on with the journey of registering to vote, trying really hard for everybody to pass that test in order to register to vote. But oh, what a victory it was in 1965. It was a big victory. You know why? Because the president, President Lyndon B. Johnson, finally signed the Voting Rights Act that allowed black folk the right to vote. He did that. Victory, victory was the day that he did that. We're well on our way to voting. I continued my work for the right to vote and for things to be equal for everybody. Even though it was troubling hardship, I am that poor black sharecropper. I am the one who was beaten, jailed, mistreated, called all kinds of names. But that didn't stop me. I had a voice and I had something to say. I stood up to Congress. I had words with the president. And I traveled from city to city, county to county, voicing the fact that you had the right to vote. Working with the Freedom Democrat Party, getting things done. I campaigned a heavy message. I have formed that Freedom Democrat Party, spoke at the National Convention. And when that day came, August the 6th, 1965, we were given the power of the ballot. I don't want to hear you say, you are behind me. I want to hear you say, you are with me. You are with me, and together we ride this road to freedom. Together, I went beyond the civil rights movement. I went place to place. Had a whole lot to say, because they weren't going to shut Fannie Lou Hanna up. I am a leader with a purpose. I am a leader with a voice. I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I had something to say. Now I want you to know everything needs to be equal. We all are equal and we all have the right to vote. I am Fannie Lou Hamer. That woman with a purpose, that woman with a dream, that woman with a plan. Remember, you the right to vote. Keep right on walking. Keep right on talking. Keep right on marching. You have the right to vote. Keep 
Turn.